Hi. Good morning. I hope everyone can hear me. Um, so this is just going to be a quick presentation on sediment and epilepsy. I'm also recording this. So for whatever reason, if um, my internet connection is bad and my like, voice gets off out of the elsewhere. Well, thank you for joining today. I know it's a weekday, so I wasn't expecting a big Definitely this presentation is ready to go. So let's get started. Um, I'm hopeful that in doing this quick presentation, I can start some awareness about how do you know epilepsy? What exactly it is? How does it get diagnosed? How does it get treated? Um, unfortunately, I think the reality is not a lot of people um, know that they have it, and that's because the diagnosis in itself can be um, a to make. And then once it's diagnosed, the treatment. So a quick disclaimer that you know this is a talk; it's supposed to be medical advice. Um, this is just something that you can use for your own purposes um, and maybe start a conversation with your physician. Um, this presentation is simply just to provide education. So let's talk a little bit about catamenial epilepsy. Um, what is catamenial epilepsy? So catamenial epilepsy is a form of epilepsy uh, in which women um, with a menstrual cycle have hormonal fluctuations and that can seizures in one way or the other. Seizures can sometimes get worse, um, can get better due to hormonal fluctuations. And the reasoning behind that is estrogen, we know, can be epileptogenic, which means it can be seizures, whereas progesterone can counteract either So that's actually interesting. Um, some people, you know, have what those natural fluctuations during their hormonal cycle. Most people do, I would argue. Um, some people who are, you know, pregnant have these fluctuations during the perimenopausal period. If you have these fluctuations, they lead to seizures getting better or getting better. So there are specific signs with your menstrual cycle where women are more at risk. And usually in the days leading up to the menstrual period is what is most common. But I think when we talk about catamenial epilepsy, not a lot of patients and also not a lot of doctors understand that there's a group to it. There's actually three different patterns to it. There's pattern one, pattern two, and pattern three. And I'm going to use some diagrams in a few slides to talk about what these specifics are. But type one tends to be, um, type one and type two actually be the most common. Type one is around the time of your period, right before you're about to bleed. Type two is during your ovulatory period. Um, and type three is the luteal phase, which is essentially after you've ovulated to start bleeding, with like three to five days in between. Um, and again, I have some diets, this is a little easier to understand. So the reason for this increased risk, um, again, we're talking about hormonal fluctuations. Um, estrogen can make epilepsy worse, whereas progesterone kind of anti-epileptic effect per se. Um, it does the opposite of estrogen, so that it's a little bit more stabilizing. And because of these fluctuations, these three times of your menstrual cycle are when you're more with seizures. So again, estrogens are pro-convulsant, usually because they increase the excitability of your neurons, whereas progesterone um, enhances GABA, which is more inhibitory. So the changes in serum estrogen and progesterone ratio are very important. Um, and just going back to this, because it is hormonal, some people have proposed hormonal therapies. Um, and then we can talk a little bit about what evidence there is for so the Cliff Notes version is there isn't much evidence for hormonal therapy, um, but you know certain certain people do benefit with certain hormonal therapy. I mentioned that at the end. Uh, so catamenial epilepsy is quite common. This is a crazy number from 10 to 70. I've even seen this up to 90 percent. So how, how do you not know if it's 10 or 90? And I think the reason why these numbers are so out, kind of out of it is because there is no good way to track 
10 menial epilepsy, unfortunately. Um, and there's not a lot of knowledge of it. So the reality is a lot of women do deal with cadmium epilepsy and seizures due to cadmium epilepsy. We just don't know anything about it. Um, so I think the first step is to try to understand why it happens. We're talking about today, when it happens. Um, so the three patterns and stuff, um, I'm not going to get into this, but this was the original paper that introduced this was a thing. As you can see, the date on this is 1997, so it was quite some time ago, and we still haven't made very big strides. Um, and this is still the paper that we currently use. So this is the diagram that I wanted to talk about. It looks a little busy, and it is, but I'm going to go through this a little, um, a little bit more slowly. So a lot of will make. Um, it is also a very much a medical diagram, so I'll try to. Well, so here we have our menstrual cycle to the left of the diagram. The menstrual cycle for most people is about 21 days, and that's the days between your periods. Of course, this is just like a standard diagram. Obviously, everyone is going to be different and have to menstruate. Um, but this is what is available right now in terms of ob gyn books and epilepsy books. So I ended up just kind of using this to illustrate what the different hormonal fluctuations are. So up here, you have your ovarian cycle. Um, you have your ovary, and you have your little egg that matures, and then it gets ejected, and this is ovulation. Once it gets ejected, it either moves to sperm, and you have fertilization, or you know it doesn't, and then you have a corpus luteum, which is kind of the leftover thing that will produce hormones to try to keep your endometrial lining alive in hopes that maybe there might be some kind of relation. And the corpus luteum, for better or for worse, kind of tricks the body into thinking you're pregnant, so you have a little bit more of a chance to get fertilized. Um, and then when that doesn't happen, you sleep. So the endometrial layer is um, another good point to look at because, as you can see, when you're ovulating, the endometrial lining is not sick. Um, it's ready to, you know, attach itself and start, um, start, you know, nourishing a child or nourishing an embryo. But when that doesn't happen, you have shedding of the endometrial layer, and then you have. So when that occurs, you also have to look at the hormones that are involved, right? So. You're starting this off here in the follicular phase where the follicle, the egg follicle is getting ready to be released. You have estrogen, which is gray. During this time period, estrogen is really kind of trying to nourish um, this egg, trying to feed it as much as possible. So that, you know, you see a surge in that and progesterone is kind of like latent, um, take the back seat. So this hormonal fluctuation is going to be important because this is the time period leading up to your ovulation, and remember how a time period leading up to your ovulation is a big, a big time where there's hormonal fluctuation right here, and that is the C2 phase of your catamenial epilepsy. So, you know, you have your ovulation, the egg is released, um, let's say that egg does not get fertilized. Before it gets, while it doesn't get fertilized, the corpus luteum will try to nourish this endometrial layer in case that there is fertilization, and you see a spike in progesterone. The reason you see a spike in progesterone is progesterone is the hormone that feeds your endometrium layer. So um, that nice tissue that's going to try to keep that egg alive is all done by progesterone. And estrogen kind of nourishes the follicle where it's progesterone. So you see a spike in progesterone, um, and we know progesterone is kind of inhibitory for epilepsy. So this hormonal fluctuation is going to be your C3 period, which is the luteal cycle, and that's why it's the least common time that you have epilepsy exacerbation because you have a or not estrogen. Um, although there is hormonal fluctuations with progesterone. So again, this is C2 and this is C3. Now when the egg does not get fertilized, the tissue sheds, the progesterone level dips, the estrogen levels pick up again, and this is your C1 phase 
anemia epilepsy. This tends to be the most common. Um, and the reasoning behind that is, again, you have these hormonal fluctuations, right? Your progesterone just dips from being fat to low, and your estrogen took over again, and your estrogen is more epileptic. So that's why when you bleed, you have hormonal fluctuation, and you also have bleeding because you just don't have the progesterone to nerves in the material layer. Um, so that, in a nutshell, are the hormonal fluctuations um, behind your menstrual cycle. Again, you have your estrogen picking up to try to nourish your follicle. And because of this, you can have the C2 period of catamenial epilepsy. And that is what we call like pre-ovulation. After ovulation, your progesterone levels pick up. Um, you can also have catamenial epilepsy here. However, because it's a progesterone surge, it's less likely. And your C1, which is the most common, is when people bleed. And that's when the progesterone levels fall in the estrogen. So, I mean, this is a lot of information, um, and how do you, you know, differentiate what kind you have, especially when menstrual cycles are regular. And that's why it's very important to start taking down when you're having um, seizure exacerbations in relation to your menstrual cycle. If you can figure out um, what phase of the menstrual cycle you're in, um, this makes things a lot better. Unfortunately, there isn't one way to do it. Um, have a free app that you know I made. It's very, it's very, it's, it's easy to use, but it's not very high because I had a limited budget. But um, that will tell you what cycle you're in. But other ways to do it is I know people I use journals. They use like normal ovulation apps to track down what that, what um, what phase of this that they're in, and then they track their seizures according to that. There's no right or wrong answer on how to do it, um, as long as you're consistent. And I would track at least over three cycles and take that information to your physician. And, you know, hopefully that'll give them more of an idea of what's going on. Um, this I'm not going to get into too much because it is a little wordy, but it basically just talks about what we talked about, the C1, C2, and C3 classifications of catamenial epilepsy. Um, and, you know, again, in ovulatory cycles, because there is that situation of estradiol or estrogen and progesterone, you can have seizure changes. Um, basically, when you withdraw progesterone, like you do when you bleed, it's almost like, you know, something like a benzodiazepine that was fighting your seizures coming away. And that can lead to an increase in frequency. And one important thing, and I, I just wanted to throw the slide in there, is that we think of estrogen as just like one hormone, but there's different types of estrogen in the female body. Um, there's E1, E2, and E3. Um, E3 is from placenta, obviously during pregnancy, but most women who are not pregnant, you have E2, which is from the ovaries, but you also have estrogen coming from fat. Um, the estrogen in, in the form of estrone can be stored in your fat, um, which is why sometimes, you know, if you do carry more fat um, in your body, you might have higher estrogen, and that can make epilepsy a little harder to treat. Um, the other reason this is important is that when you are going through menopause or perimenopause, I think, you know, most people think, well, you know, my ovaries are no longer producing so much estrogen, why am I still having epilepsy? Well, the reality is you still have estrogen. Um, inadequate storage tissues. So you can still create estrogen. Um, it doesn't mean that you're not producing estrogen. So that's why when you're heading into menopause, I mean, you know, it doesn't get better. In fact, as you're going into menopause during that perimenopausal period where your hormones are kind of all over the place, that seizures can actually get worse. We've seen this. Um, this is more about progesterone. Again, this is a wordy slide. We don't need to get into it. But essentially, you know, the prior slide was about the type of estrogens, about the type of progesterones. Progesterones, unlike estrogens, aren't stored in the back. They're just natural, non-synthetic hormones um, that bind to receptors. So we talked about menopause a little bit already, where, you know, menopause in and of itself does not mean your cabinet epilepsy goes away. Uh, perimenopause actually can be a worse time for seizures. However, once you're fully in menopause and after menopause, then the hormones have stabilized, um, especially postmenopause, you know, it does a little better. Uh, 
pregnancy is an interesting time period because initially as you're getting pregnant, seizures can get worse. You do have those hormonal fluctuations. However, as you're going through pregnancy, as you can see, your progesterone and estrogen levels, even though they're both rising, they're pretty steadily rising and they're rising together. Because of that, and this isn't for everyone, but for the majority of people I've encountered, your pregnancy actually tends to be a little bit of a protective time um, or a protective time for your seizures, meaning your seizures are not going to get worse during pregnancy unless the hormonal shifts are aberrant. Um, but for most people, pregnancy is a time where things do stabilize. Yes, there is changes in hormone, but usually it's gradually um, and it's not all over the place. So because of that, um, better seizure control can be seen in pregnancy. Again, this is not for everyone. I've definitely also encountered people where catamenial epilepsy gets worse during pregnancy. I think the only way to really predict this is based on your pattern prior to getting pregnant. So now how do we diagnose this? Um, first, as I said before, a diagnosis is difficult. You just kind of have to make sure that you're tracking things down carefully um, on a seizure diary, as well as where you are in your cycle. That's going to really help characterize the type of seizures you're having or what pattern it is. Um, and why does pattern matter? It matters for treatment. Um, so, you know, earlier I said some people use hormonal therapies. Hormonal therapies, including progesterone therapy, has been tried. Um, there have been randomized drug trials using progesterone therapy, using IV steroids, using all kinds of things to try to stabilize uh, hormonal fluctuations to see if it matters. Um, and realistically, there hasn't been too much evidence that hormonal therapy is the way to go. Some people I've encountered and I've taken care of using a birth control pill to stay with someone has been really helpful for them. Using the suggestion of a mini pill has been helpful. But, you know, this, I tend to think that if it works for you, great. Um, but there's no guarantee. Because sometimes a lot of these results are anecdotal because everyone is different. Um, I've also heard people ask if hormonal testing will be helpful. Um, I've encountered endocrinologists who do that. I just, I don't have a lot of belief in hormonal testing just because everyone hormones are different. So unless you have a definite baseline for someone, I'm not sure how you can say that, you know, a level is abnormal for someone. I, um, I mean, some endocrinologists, I think, have a calculated way of doing it. But realistically, I haven't seen anyone with me. Um, so what do I do? Um, what I do and what a lot of endocrinologists probably do as well is if you know exactly when your seizures are getting worse, like if it's C1, C2, C3, if it's like a specific time period, let's say it's before you bleed. Let's say it's five days before you bleed, you always have worse. I would probably, instead of increasing your daily medications, give you a recipe medication around that time period that you could take before, um, before I know your seizures are getting worse, right? So, Five days before you bleed. So for those five days, you take a benzo twice a day. Action. If you don't like benzodiazepines, another way to do it is to give a little bit of additional seizure medications during that time period to give you a little bit more protection. So those are the two ways to do it. It's almost, you know, it's not a permanent fix. It's almost like a band-aid fix um, where when you know things are going to be worse, you just give a little bit of additional medication during the time period. And then after it's time period is done and go back to what you normally do. In my experience, that has worked the best. Um, however, you know, everyone is different. And again, this is something that needs to be a conversation between you and your doctor because there is no evidence for a large multi-center trial um, for what works definitively. Another thing I get asked is, well, what if I have my ovaries removed? Well, that's when that slide about the three different types of estrogens I mentioned um, becomes important because your ovaries are not the only place you're going to get estrogen from. So, you know, I know, and also tests have shown that that's not the best way to mean, So I would not subject anyone to that to decrease their seizure frequencies. Um, again, oral contraceptive pills, some people use them, um, and I think, you know, if it helps, it helps. 
for some people, for a handful of people, it can actually make these worse because now you're introducing new estrogen into the system. Um, but, you know, I have also met people who swear by it for having you know, epilepsy because if you do take this consistently, you will probably skip the period. And for some people, that's, you know, very important. Um, so in summary, you know, about 70% of people with epilepsy can have an and have a catamenial precedent to their epilepsy. Um, I mean, catamenial epilepsy is probably more than this, to be honest. And I think, you know, it's the two things that are widely stigmatized, epilepsy and periods. <laughs> and especially if you're a woman, I think it's a little harder to kind of give a good estimate of this number. But I think the first step is to try to understand what it is, why it is, and how you diagnose it, which we talked about briefly in the talk. Um, reproductive hormones are important. They do have neuroactive as we saw here, that can affect neural excitability and seizures. So estrogen progesterone become very important. There are no specific treatments, but you can treat those phases specifically with additional seizure medications or benzodiazepines. Um, that's kind of it. I know that was a shorter webinar, but I didn't want to inundate a lot of information. Also, this is being reported, so you will have access to it in the future. If there are um, questions about future webinars and future short topics I can cover, I'm definitely happy to do that. Um, I also, you know, uh, can prescribe and practice medicine in New York, California, but those are my only two states at the moment. But if you're interested in setting up some one-on-one -on -one counseling time, you can definitely email me at this email address. Um, and again, Epilepsy Tracker is the Cadmunial Epilepsy app. I've been working on for about a year now this year. It's not, you know, something that is again very high tech, but I think it achieves the purpose and so far I've gotten good feedback. That's um in my profile on Instagram. But thank you guys for your time today. Um and I really appreciate it. And I think that's it for now. Thank you.